Hello everyone, this is Dan, and today I want to show you one of the projects I had lying around for the past week, just waiting for the time when I could make a video of it, and now I have the time, so here's the video. So what this is, is a rather simple combination lock, and I got the idea from the previous snapshot, I believe, when picture frames or item frames had the ability, or were granted the ability to output a signal with a comparator based on which direction they are facing. Really rather simple, but I looked at that and thought to myself right off the bat that will make would make an awesome combination lock, so that's what this is. First one, then the second number, or the second direction, and then the third one. And if you put it in correctly, then this will open and you can access the chests off to the side. Afterwards, just click the button again, that'll close and the light will turn on, signaling that you can put in the number again, more or less. If you put in the wrong number, it doesn't open. So I do know that I'm not the first one to do this. I found the entire thing with the item frames and right off the bat I went and uh, built this up and only after that did I think to myself, you know, there could be other people who had the same idea and that's when I noticed Generic B's video on YouTube when I searched for it and um, yeah, so he built it first but I had the same idea and built out a completely different version. The front may look the same, but the rest tone is completely different. But yeah, he did it first, I did it after him, but it's still, you know, it's completely different, so I can't even say that I'm really copying him or anything. Anyway, so that's it. Over here I just put in a secret switch to the side, just for the hell of it, so I can access this door. Over here is where the code is set up, so that's the first number, second and third. You can change these and right out at once it'll affect everything else, so the code is set here. There's nothing to do with, you know, furnaces and the amount of items in each furnace or anything like that. It's a lot more visual and a lot simpler to use, I guess. It's also rather compact. Over here we have a selector. Based on that we subtract the correct um, configuration from the one you're putting in. And if all of them line up correctly, then the last one will open the door. And the one after that, once it's time for the reset, it will reset the RS null latch. That, you know, basically if the RS null latch is in the reset position, then the door can open. But if you put in the wrong number, then the RS null latch will flip, meaning that you put in one of the numbers wrong, so the door will not open once the last number is put in. After that, once you click it again, it just resets everything to the original numbers, or the original starting position. So yeah, that's enough about that. Let's close that off and get out of here. I just built this up just for the video, more or less. It's meant to be inside a, you know, mountain or something, or underground, definitely, so it doesn't really look that good on the outside, but hey, whatever. So these two over here are the earlier models where I just had them build up and this is the first configuration I tried. After that I thought maybe it just looks like there's a lot of empty space so I thought I could shrink it down and so I did. So this is the final version. It's completely expandable so you can have just one number if you really feel like it or you know nine or whatever. I do suggest keeping it in sets of threes because they line up a lot simpler but a hey, three should be enough for just about any configuration in Minecraft. Six is definitely more than enough, but if you want, just go with six. Nine, you, you could, but I don't recommend it because it takes too long to put in. So yeah, that's about it. So let's get to the actual building phase and the tutorial portion of this video. For anyone interested, I will be putting out a video of me building this using the latest uh, empty blocks or whatever, barrier blocks, where the blocks themselves are completely invisible, so you can't actually see them. Which means that I'll be building this and putting the redstone on more or less empty air that I can't notice. So, yeah, which isn't a rather interesting thing, but hopefully you like it. But that's for later. Anyway, start off with just this setup like so. And another block there, two. And two, one block higher, like that. And that's where we're going to start, so we want a picture frame there, a button there, and just an item. I like redstone torches because they really look like a selector like that. But you can use whatever really, you know, strikes your fancy. So yeah, feeding out we want a comparator and two more comparators down there. Set this one, the middle one, to subtraction mode, and because that's the one we'll be using to check or set it to the correct signal. Everything else is just to 
set, send off the signal, the correct distance and the correct uh, power. Two more, red, or just two redstone dust up there. As you can notice, if you have it on the original position, then this one is on, whereas this one is off, meaning that if we put a torch here and take a signal out of here with a repeater, they'll both be off, meaning that the number is correct. So just uh, put a little ledge here with a repeater feeding into a block and redstone dust on the last portion there. Meaning that if the number is ever wrong, then that redstone dust will be turned on. Yeah. Then let's uh, stop there for a bit and go over to this side. So we have the button. We want redstone dust down at the between and on the top there. Feeding into a... Um, oh, come on sticky piston with a block on top of it and feeding out we wanted a repeater on three ticks so it's rather a simple uh, redstone what is it you know signal reducer or whatever it's called but anyway i actually do know i just can't remember ah damn it anyway redstone uh, repeat over here on four ticks feeding into another sticky piston with a block on top into another Restaurant repeater on three ticks. There we go. That's pulse limiter. That's what I want to say. Anyway, it shortens that button pulse into only three ticks. That's what we want. So we want this feeding into another block with a redstone torch right off to the side. And that will, as you can see from the finished one, there will be uh, hoppers up there which uh, continue on in a cycle. And that will be the signal to proceed to the next number. All right. Coming back off to this side, we want to just connect these two portions. So just into a block here with a redstone um, torch there. Block right above the redstone torch and block to the side like so. Then another redstone torch feeding out of this one. So just like that. Meaning that if this is the correct number, this torch will be lit. And uh, over on top of this block, we want a redstone repeater. So when you click the button for three seconds, that repeater will be off. And if the number is incorrect, then this will also be off, meaning that this block that we placed right on top of here will experience a brief moment when it doesn't have power, which will set off the RS Nor latch. Right. Right, um, let's see. Sure, let's uh, finish off the RS Nor latch first. So we want another block there, a block there, and a redstone torch there. And that's where the, red, the um, RS Nor latch will be, which is rather simple to build. We just need a dropper facing into, or two droppers facing into each other, like so. And this one right here is the one we want to provide a num an item into. Not two, just one single item into there. And feeding or checking this dropper here will be a comparator. And if this is on, then the, con then the configuration you put in is wrong. Basically, at one of those points, this block right there had its signal removed, so the item from here went off into there. Just to show it, I guess it's rather simple. There's a signal there, so that means the number is wrong. We don't have the actual subtraction portion of it, so anything but the one facing down is wrong. But if we click this button, as you can notice, that lights up. So there we go. Let's move that off again, and if we have this facing down, which is currently the correct configuration, and press it, then as you can see, nothing happens. So that's rather simple, actually. What I wanted to continue is just have it go like that, and a repeater, and that is the reset line. So if we send in power into here, it'll reset this one back to the original configuration. Then feeding out of here, we want th this line to just continue forward and into here and into a redstone torch, which goes down to the bottom here. So if that is on, that means the door is open. So let's uh, feed it off to two sides so you can take either one of these and connect them to your door. Then notice that this one feeds off into this block, so we can just put this one here Another one here, but we need a block above to block the signal. Let's just close that one off as well, since we'll need it later. Then over here, just to make sure that these two don't encounter each other, I guess, we put another redstone repeater and just feeding out to the side. 
So you may wonder why it's on at the moment, and that's because we didn't add in the portion yet that turns it off if uh, the last num if it's not the very last number has just been pressed, and that portion will be done a bit later, and it will be done right here. So we can uh, right here. So block there, block there, and connect the redstone dust down towards it. Another block here with a redstone torch on it, so it turns off. This one will only receive power when you put in the last digit of the code. And this one will receive power when you click it one more time to do the reset loop. So that's actually the simple portion. Right here is where we put in the selector. So we want block there. Just block this entire thing off. And just like so. Then redstone dust there and on the three sides. As you can see, they're actually not connecting to anything. And that's good. Then we want three more blocks just like so to bring this up to this kind of thing and another one there then lastly we want a repeater or comparators along these sides so as you can see basically if we put push in a block here it will subtract that number minus one from here if we put one there it'll do the same for this one and this one so we just need a couple of uh, pistons here to push in the blocks and we'll do that in just a moment as soon as we finish this portion, which is rather simple. We just have three frames and uh, three selections for there. So that's that part done. We just need to add in the por portions with the pistons. And that part is actually rather simple as well. Build this portion up, build this up, just close that all off. And we want this one right here and that one to have blocks. You can really, I guess, close this block off as well if you really feel like it, but, you know, whatever. Then, on those three blocks, we put in pistons and blocks on top of the, or on those pistons. So, when this gets triggered, let me see if I can get a redstone. So, if that gets triggered, that one gets pushed in. If this one gets triggered, that one gets selected. Rather simple, really. Then, off right here, we want these three Notice this one is actually this redstone torch is actually feeding that, which is good because we want another redstone torch right there into a block with another redstone torch right on top. So when we click the button just briefly, that will turn off, which is good. Then over here, we want three comparators feeding into there. Since we want to proceed, we will just want that repeater there to feed into there. So whichever one gets selected, that's the piston that gets activated. And finally, we want the hopper chain, which is the very last thing we need to do. So we want it to be going counterclockwise, so down that way. And one, two, three, four, and it should be a four. Just like that, going off to the side. Right on top of them, for these four of the, four of the eight, we want redstone dust on top to hold them, or hold the item inside. And finally, over here, we want two blocks that we can place redstone comparators onto, feeding into those blocks. And that is actually it. You can, you know, kind of extend these to close it off if you feel like it, or, you know, close them a bit over here. But anyway, that's all up to you. But the build is actually done. The last thing we need to do to get it operational is we need to get ourselves a minecart or something that's single stackable, just, you know, non-stackable, I guess you can say and put that into that hopper. As you can notice at the moment, it's actually the door is open, which is correct because since this didn't get flipped because we didn't actually do anything, then it says that the number is actually correct. If we go over here, we can actually, let's extend this here, redstone dust there, two blocks there and a light on top of there. That will make it so that this light is on if this piston is powered from there, which tells you that you're basically at the very first number, so you can put in the number. So we are currently at the last one. So we click this and it proceeds off to here. As you can notice, this opens and the light turns on, meaning we can actually put in the number. Let's go over here and actually set a code that's not down, down, down. Let's go down, side, and up. That's okay. So down, click the button. Then side, click the button again. 
and finally up and click the button and you can notice that these open so now your door should be open. Then you click again and it goes through the reset loop where the doors close and this turns on so you can put it in again. And if you put in the wrong one then, well here we go, if you put in even one wrong one then this flips so this is on so in this loop you can say up until it passes the reset point it will not be able to open the doors which is what we want. So that is actually it, it's rather simple at least from the way I see it. There's several blocks around that you could remove. So over here, if you wanted, you could obviously change the entire wall to suit your fancy if you wanted to. You know, possibly put this off to the side and in a separate room that's kind of secreted away so you can set in the number whenever you feel like it. If you don't want it to be easily changed, you can just leave it in the redstone and just block off the entire redstone. Or, you know, I guess you could replace it with furnaces or with items if you really want to make it difficult for yourself. But, hey, not my decision there. Obviously, this, as you can see, all of these are just expandable blocks, which you can easily remove and replace with whatever you want. The only ones of importance are really those two, with the button and the frame. But they're not connected to anything at the back, so if you replace them, you just have to remember to put these items at the front back in place and everything in the back remains normal so yeah that's actually it that's enough for this video i was going a bit too far with information down at the end but anyway so i hope you liked it so like subscribe uh, all that fun stuff and i have several variations that i will be showing you in several later videos where well i guess i replaced the um selector panel with some more interesting and more involved things but anyway that's for later, so see you around. This is Dan, signing off.